I have to smile because so often I find in technology or in social media or in any written word context, sometimes people will take something and run with it. They'll see one little portion of it and take that out of context and make something out of it that it doesn't say or isn't real or somehow that they create a feeling and then build on that feeling, feeding on it as though it were alive and it takes on a life of itself, so to speak. But really it takes on a food of itself and they just keep feeding themselves with their own statements of what they want, react, and act to do. And how sad, because God wants us to listen and to hear and then to speak according to wisdom so that we could point in the right direction that we should go. If we just took one word and ran with it, where would we be? But Jesus said in the volume of the book, it speaks of me. And I like that because sometimes, you know, I have to just keep responding to a person when they <laughs> say all manner of things against me for whatever reason because I could make a statement like, oh, you know, Jesus wants you to hear his voice, you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, you, 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 Jesus doesn't want you to hear his voice. He wants you to read his word. Well, that too. And he wants you to, you know, learn to do what he says to do, which is, you know, to preach and to teach and to, you know, disciple and to grow and to develop and to, you know, go through this whole process of being in church, you know, and praying and discipling and sharing and caring and being there and taking care of those that are about you and those that you have extra for, you know, and doing all the things that we know that, you know, religion does, but that's what we do because we do it as part of our relationship with God because God inspires us and God talks to us. But when a person takes only one part of that and runs with it, then they come back and say to me sometimes like, but you're teaching people not to read the Word. And I went, no, I've never said that. I don't imply that. I've said that as you read the Word, God can speak to you through the Word, and that you should have a Bible study time, as well as a reading the Bible time, as well as a devotional time, as well as going to church, as well as praying and doing all those things. And it's so funny because it's amusing to me, knowing me, you know, I mean, wow, you know, I mean, if there ever was a radical that would want to create, you know, some kind of like, let's go do some other thing, you know, that would be me. But I'm the one who's the advocate for people to go to, you know, the church of their choice where God is speaking to them and training them up and causing them to practice the gifts of the Spirit and to learn and develop and to become, you know, more loving towards each other so that they can handle the world and its ways and deal with the provocations that come their way, whether it be in their own marriage or life or, or children or world or ungodly people or godly people so that they'd be prepared for the ministry. But wow, sometimes when somebody comes at me, I just think, wow, where, Lord? What do they see that is so foreign to what you said? And the reality is, it's not. It's just he had the same issues, the same conflicts, the same misunderstandings that you and I have when we simply read, discuss, and live by what God is speaking to us. Unchanging, the love and compassion of Christ, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Philippians 2.7 Because change is everywhere around us at all times on this earth and among human beings, it is difficult for us to grasp the eternal and unchanging nature and person of Jesus Christ. Nothing about our Lord Jesus has changed down to this very hour. His love has not changed. His compassion and understanding of us has not changed. His interest in us has not changed. And His purpose for us has not changed. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the very same Jesus. Even though He has been raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of the majesty in heavens, and made head over all things to the church, His love for us remains unchanged. It is hard for us to accept the majestic simplicity of this constant, wonder-working Jesus. 
we are used to getting things changed so that we're they are always bigger and better. <laughs> he is Jesus. He's easier to approach than the humblest friend you ever had. He is the sun that shines upon you. He is the star of our night. He is the giver of our life and the rock of our hope. He is our safety and our future. He is our righteousness. He is our sanctification. He is our inheritance. You will find that he is all of this in that instant that you move your heart towards him in faith. This is the journey to Jesus that must be made in the depths of the heart and being. When you are alone, when you are still, when you are with God, turn to Jesus. This is a journey where feet do not count. I smile when I think of just some of the conflict that I get into because it's always, I'm just simply talking about what Jesus said, what Jesus did why Jesus loves us, how Jesus has grace for us, how Jesus has mercy, what Jesus is you know, trying to accomplish in us, what Jesus has given us. I mean, I sound like a Jesus freak. <laughs> but if it's not all about him, what's it all about? <laughs> Boy, there are so many people that get into religion of Christianity and then they're content with being religion personified. That while they talk about Jesus and they look like they're talking about or walking with Jesus, sometimes it's like, you know, we got to put Jesus on the back burner because we got to do the religious thing, you know? And we got to get this religious thing down, then we can put Jesus back in the picture. No. <laughs> the same thing that he said from the beginning, he's going to say in the end, you know? Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. You know, it's just that simple. You know, and anyone that calls upon him would not be, you know, cast away, but that we could take his yoke upon us, you know, and his burden would be easy and his yoke light. It would cost us our lives, that's true, but what cost was so price? What cost is so precious a price to pay when we gain eternal life forever and ever? I can think of none. And to think of all the things that I take to God daily, that, you know, I'm going, you're kidding me, <laughs> you know, that my brain goes nuts. And I'm a pretty intellectual and intelligent person. But I take it to Him in prayer and I leave it there and I'm so thrilled that I can be happy in the morning of my day, in the noon of my day, and in the night of my day. Because all through the day, I just keep Him with me and I try to just keep giving it to Him. And I love it. What else would I want to be but become likened unto Him? Change from glory to glory into the incorruptible image of Jesus Himself. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that why we're talking and sharing devotions?